Hi everyone and welcome back once again to Biology Circuit. In this video, I am going to discuss some important previous year CSI net questions from evolution unit. So let's start. First question: The origin and diversification of angiosperms was during which geological period? So the right answer would be option four, Cretaceous. The origin and diversification of angiosperms was during the Cretaceous period. Next, <coughs> during which geological period was there an explosive increase in the number of many marine invertebrates phyla? So, option one is Ordovician, Devonian, Permian, Cambrian. Right answer will be the Cambrian. During the Cambrian period. There was an explosive increase in the number of many marine invertebrate phyla. Next, consider the following four geological periods: Quaternary, Cretaceous, Jurassic, and Cambrian. Which one of the following options represents the correct arrangement of the of these geological periods from earliest to the recent? So the right answer will be option two. That is Cambrian, Jurassic, Cretaceous, Quaternary. Right answer will be the option two. Option two match the right sequence of these geological periods. Next, Tontonian is an informal taxonomy designation used for animals referring to. Same name for genus and species. Same name for species and subspecies. Trinomial nomenclature. The name of the author for the species. So the right answer will be the option one. Same name for the genus and species. Next, the speciation in which. A population splits into two geographically isolated populations. Experience dissimilar selective pressure and genetic drift is known as sympatric speciation, paraplastic speciation, peripatric speciation, and allopatric speciation. So here the uh, two species are split geographically. Okay, so the right answer will be option four, allopatric speciation. Next, cladistic classification is based on sequential order in which branches arises from a phylogenetic tree. The order of sequence divergence, morphological features and skeleton of individuals. Option four, cellular organization and cytoskeleton. So the cladistic classification is based on the sequential order in which the Branches arises arise from the phylogenetic tree. Option one will be the right answer. So there is a figure, and based the question is based on the above, which one of the following combination is correct? So here the right answer is the option two. Starting from the multicellularity, eumetazoa and parazoa. From the eumetazoa, there is bilateria and radiata. From the bilateria, there is A, B. You have to find out A and B. So A will be protostome, B will be deuterostome. Okay. From A, protostome, there will be ectaisojuans and lophotroco. Juans, lophotrochojuans. Okay, from the ectaisojuans, arthropoda and nematoda. Okay, and from the lophotrochojuans, there is annelids. Why? Why will be mollusk? Annelids, mollusk, and patelmintis. And above, from the protostom, chordata, and X. X will be the Echinodermata, chordata and echinodermata. Okay, and from the radiata, 
from imidazolam bilateria and radiator from radiator to the deuteria okay and from parazoa it will be porifera so, so this is the complete evolutionary tree next which of the following disease does not leave any paleontological evidence so the right answer will be option 4 the cholera because if you see the symptoms of the other disease tuberculosis arthritis rickets those are somehow associated with some bones okay also in tuberculosis arthritis and rickets but in case of cholera the symptoms are not associated with bones or structure structural there is uh, in, in the other three disease some structural changes occurs but in case of cholera there are no structural changes so it does not leave any paleontological evidence go to the next which species concept utilizes morphological and molecular characters to distinguish between species evolutionary ecological biological phylogenetic so the right answer will be phylogenetic phylogenetic species concept utilizes the morphological and molecular characteristics to distinguish between species move to the next the most commonly used molecular tool for phylogenetic analysis involves sequencing of mitochondrial RTNA, mitochondrial RNA, ribosomal RNA and nuclear RNA. The right answer will be option 3, ribosomal RNA. The most commonly used molecular tool is a very important question. It comes more than one times. Uh, the most commonly used molecular tool for phylogenetic analysis involves sequencing of ribosomal RNA. Next, according to which evolutionary theory there are long periods without significant evolutionary changes interrupted by short episodes of rapid evolution. The right answer will be option 1. Punctuated equilibria. So this is basically a theory. There are long periods without significant evolutionary changes interrupted by short episodes of rapid evolution. So the right answer is the punctuated equilibria. Next, the mean and standard deviations of body size in a Drosophila populations are 8.5 and 2.2 mm respectively. Under natural selection over many generations, the mu and this mean and deviations, standard deviations of body size changes to 8.5 and 0.8 mm respectively. The type of natural selections responsible for the change is called directional neutral disruptive stabilizing so the right answer will be the stabilizing because after the main, after many years the mean is the same and the standard deviation is decreased than the previous previous one so this natural selection is called stabilizing next which of the following statement uh, statements about evolution is not true evolution is not evolution is a product of natural selection evolution is goal oriented prokaryotes evolves faster than eukaryotes evolution did not analyze did not always lead to a better phenotype so the right answer will be option two evolution is goal oriented evolution this is not true so evolution is not goal oriented but evolution other three characteristics of evolution are true evolution is a product of natural selection right prokaryotes evolve faster than eukaryotes that is also right evolution did not always lead to a better phenotype okay so option two is the right answer which one of the following uh, does not contribute to the micro evolutionary changes the right answer uh, options are Mutations, random mating, genetic drift, and natural selection. So the right answer is the random mating. Random mating does not contribute to the microevolutionary change. 
so the other three options contribute to the microevolutionary changes like mutation genetic drift and natural selection next <clears throat> given below are statesmen uh, statements on living fossils select the correct statements living fossils are impressions of ex extinct organism in old rocks option 2 living fossils show high morphological divergence from fossil records option 3 living fossils are always an evolutionary link uh, between two classes of organism option 4 living fossils are organisms that have remained unchanged for million of years so option 4 is the right answer living fossils are actually organisms those are those remain same Uh, that is unchanged for billions of years next select the correct statement related to the phylogeny of primates lemurs are more closely related to the lorises than to gibbons orangutans are closer to lorises than to gibbons tarsiers are the same as old world monkeys humans are closer to new world monkeys than the orangutans so the right answer is the Lemurs are more closely related to lorises than to gibbons. Option one. So that's all for today. Hope it will be helpful. If you like this video, please subscribe to Malik Sahib, share it, and keep watching for more such videos. Uh, thank you.